Okay, um, good morning everyone. If you can hear me, kindly indicate in the um, comment section. If you can hear me, kindly indicate in the comment section. Okay, my name is God's Gift, uh, Juma Fue. Um, please, if you can hear me, kindly indicate in the comment section. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, my name is God's Gift, uh, Juma Fue. I am the, um, I'm the program assistant officer at um, Knowledge Exchange Center. And um, it's a privilege to have you all here for today's um, class. So, um, the um, Knowledge Exchange Center employability training is for the Knowledge Exchange Center employability training is for um, fresh graduates and um, individuals that want to that want to um, gain an upper hand in terms of um, earning a job or getting their dream jobs or getting their dream job. So today we are having um, Mr. David Jayola, and he's going to be taking us on uh, a practical approach to landing a job. Afterwards, we're going to have Mr. Gogo, who is the Executive Secretary of Knowledge Exchange Centre, and he's going to be briefing us or giving us uh, some information that you wouldn't want to miss. You wouldn't want to miss the information that uh, Mr. Agogo is going to be passing across to us. So in order not to waste much time, and because our facilitator is working on a schedule, he's working on a schedule, I will introduce him so that um, we can all um, start the session. So his name is, give me some minutes. His name is Jayola Ayodeji, David. Um, David is an experienced project and marketing consultant with over six years marketing consulting, over six years in marketing consulting, event management and business development. He currently runs his own startup where he works as chief marketing and operations officer. He worked at Bank of Industry with the UNDP project called Access to Renewable Energy. 
where he helped with planning for the energy challenge with 11 winners emerging from 11 different states in Nigeria. He also helped in executing trainings for banks and SMEs across Nigeria over 15 months. He handled indoor and outdoor events, partnerships, public relations, and new media as part of the overall marketing plan for the Jobberman Limited, where he has initiated, participated, and handled over 100 career-related events in 30 months. A major highlight at this role would be the recruitment of 1,200 candidates for H for ARM pension. And this was done in eight weeks. Currently, Deji works with um, Aaron 360 and Worker Nigeria. He's the convener of LinkedIn Pro Hangouts and Project 2025. He also has several interests in FinTech, bulk recruitment and co-work spaces. He's a versatile manager with good communication and project management skills. He's a good orator and he has implemented several projects spanning up to a decade. He holds a BSc in chemical engineering from the University of Lagos, Nigeria. Um, David Ayodeji is a recipient of the Tony Lumelu Foundation grant in 2017. So we're gonna welcome our facilitator, Mr. David Jayola, and he's gonna be taking us a, on a practical approach for landing a job. Please let's uh, make welcome Mr. David um, Jayola. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. All right, uh, good afternoon, uh, Gift. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I, I can hear you very well. Awesome, so uh, I will just start. Well, you've read uh, a lot of, you know, my profile. Uh, most people that know me will just tell you I am uh, a recruitment consultant and they will end it at that. But yeah, thank you for taking time to read all the uh, stories on my profile. Uh, so guys, uh, good afternoon. I am in transit, like, you know, I'm on the road, right? So I'm trying to ensure that uh, you hear less of the car noises that is uh, uh, causing background noise for me right now. Uh, today is really packed, but I promise to be here. So <clears throat> I'm here. Now, the question is, how does one land a job, right? That is what a lot of people usually send to me uh, when they connect to me on LinkedIn. I'm a bit more active on LinkedIn than Twitter and Instagram, even though I have a presence on Twitter and LinkedIn and then Instagram. But the way LinkedIn was done, it's easy for us to reach candidates who we need to fill roles. So I posted something yesterday, I said, or this morning, that there are still a lot of opportunities right and companies are still recruiting now the issue here is not that there are no roles for you to fill the issue here is mostly availability of the candidates i can put it to you that 70 percent of the candidates are not available and people will argue with me and say, ah, no, now, everyone is looking for a job. Ah, I must, I must be available when there's an opportunity. But when the real chance actually comes, the availability of the candidate has oftentimes proven me right. So I'll give you an example of something that happened yesterday. Two different job interviews were conducted. I sent four to five guys there. Two people went, and one of them got the job. Three others did not go for one of the role. The second one as well, out of the four that confirmed availability, two of them went. Of course, one got the job, the other didn't show. So you see that in as much as we get job opportunities and we share it, candidates still has this issue of availability. But of course, it's not like everybody's unavailable. But you know that 
it is data that we work with to determine some things. I cannot have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with all the candidates that I have placed on jobs and the ones that didn't go for interviews. But the feedback I get from the HRs and the companies is what I use, you know, to determine these numbers and how uh, things are going. So, one of the practical approaches that I usually tell people is be available. Now, being available is not just being on groups, right? It's not just applying for a job. I know a lot of candidates have applied for over 100 jobs this year. If you do a survey and ask around and say, how many jobs have you applied for? I'm, I'll do a that survey when, once I'm done with this session. How many jobs have you applied for in 2020? You will be shocked at the number that you will get. But here is the question that I'm going to pose. How many interviews have you missed? I will not put any other question to raise, but people have missed interviews for several reasons. Majority of the reasons will be maybe around uh, inability to make it to the venue say, oh, I don't have enough transportation, or the place is too far away from where I stay, or uh, the invite came in too late and I couldn't prepare myself to go. So there are several excuses. But you know that when we are reading data, we will not see those excuses. What we will see is you have missed this interview mm? and will have gotten a lot of numbers in that particular category as well. So these are the questions that I keep on asking candidates, are you available for the job? That is very, very key. So uh, if you are practical or if you are being real about job search, you need to make yourself available. So I told some of my people that job search is not a free thing. It's expensive in the sense that applying for jobs requires you to be online, right? That's data. Mm? It needs you to have a phone or a system, right? Needs you to make some calls sometimes if you can't get those roles as fast as you want, and also requires you to go to the venue of interviews. So, and what? Pro. And sometimes the interviews might take uh, maybe three or four stages. You see where I'm getting at? So for an average job, you spend roughly around 5,000 to 7,000 to go. Imagine you have six interviews in like two months. It means you will have spent close to 30,000 on you know, processing the whole thing. So job interviews are expensive. I didn't even talk about clothes, shoes, because sometimes you might say, oh, this shoe that I have is too old. Or can I buy a new slippers? Or oh, sorry, a new shoe that, you know, that makes me look a bit more presentable so I don't go in there looking like I'm suffering or looking like I've been working the whole of Lagos because I'm looking for a job and I'm using just one shoe. No. You want to find something else. Okay, let me have another. So let me buy a new trouser. Let me buy this jacket. Let me see the face so I can, you know, be presentable for that interview. So there are several, you know, things that you consider. So this has been some of the reasons why people don't actually get the final opportunity, right? Now, this has nothing to do with competency. It's just the preparation towards your interviews, right? Your competency level, your CV, your qualification will get you an interview. Now, what will get you into that interview is a total, is a different thing entirely, right? Now that, now, that is something that has to do with you as a person. Are you that person that everybody can actually depend on? Can I send you an email and depend on you so much that you will show up? without me having to follow you up three or four times and then calling you two times just for you to make an interview that you applied for. It is very, very sometimes tiring when the HR has to call everybody two or three times just to be sure they will show up. Some HRs will stop and just find the nearest guy that looks like the role or is qualified enough and give them the job without doing so much time wasting in interviews because there are so many people looking for roles but you are qualified but they have to drag you to respond to the email that was sent 
They have to call you to remind you that you have an interview in two days. They have to call you again on the day of interview that are you coming. So size availability, communication is something that has become one of the biggest issues, you know, in landing jobs. So if we are being practical again, your communication skill is another thing you need to up. If you are serious about your job and you think that you need to have gotten a job by now, but you don't have it, communication is something you need to take serious. And let me break it down as easy as this. I sent you an email on Tuesday about a job. Instead of you to respond to me and say, email well received, thank you for the opportunity. You will carry the email and start asking questions from people without even confirming if you're gonna show up or not. Responding to the email will give me an assurance that you are somewhat available and I can plan with you. Reading the email and not responding doesn't mean you've seen it. To you, it might mean that. To me, it might mean unavailable. So, communicate effectively and efficiently. Two, if a number was provided in the emails you got, you could just call that number to ask for more questions if you need. Another thing I find fascinating is that when you put a phone number in you know, the email interview that, that you send, people rarely call you. They just assume they don't need to call. Maybe they are afraid to respond or they are afraid not to make grammatical error, you know, so that they don't jeopardize their chances. So they don't respond to the mails. When you get an official email, please, the first thing you need to do is respond to that email. Acknowledge the fact that you applied for a job and acknowledge that you have gotten that invitation. So planning can be done with your name on the list. Are we clear? Now, let's move on to the next thing that, uh, that is practical enough for landing a job, which is qualification. You need to be qualified before you can get picked. I know that those years, a lot of us have gone to so many seminars where they boost our morale by motivating us that we can do anything, which is understandable. You can actually do anything you set your heart to, but you have to work at it. See, it is that effort part that people don't remember. They only remember aspire to perspire. They only remember you can achieve anything you believe once you conceive it. But there's something called the underlying effort that you put into it. When you conceive something, you work at that thing because you believe in it. That is how people make or achieve results. It's like me giving you uh, uh, raw materials to make shoe for me. And then you just believe that you can achieve shoe you know, at the end of three months, and then you leave your materials without, you know, cutting it and molding it to give you what you want. Nothing will be done. You have to make the moves. You have to do the work. If you don't do the work, you will not get the result. So don't assume results. You work it out. Yeah? So don't assume that or you say, oh, yeah, you believe that you can be the general manager of a company with your two years experience as a business admin person. No, it's sometimes infatuation. You know, you just get disappointment like that all the time. If you see a role that your experience doesn't match and your skill sets doesn't match and nothing on the description you can match, there's no point applying for that job. It's a waste of time. Nobody will call you. I, I've, I've been told that I have Ash truth. I say yes. I need to tell them the, the real thing when it comes to job search. I can't be uh, micromanaging or micing words which you're telling you, oh, yeah, 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 you stand a chance. When all that will happen is you apply and you will not even get a response until why you did not get called. Last two months, I mistakenly posted 
can I see your CV on LinkedIn? And over the course of two weeks, I got close to 240 something CVs in my inbox, in my messages. And I was asking them, who asked you to send me your CV? They said, I did. I said, when did I do so? They said, your post said, can I see your CV? So they assumed I was requesting for me, for them to share their CV to me. And they kept on sending it to me. Of course, I couldn't do anything with those CVs. They were too much. 200 plus CVs with my workload. How am I going to do that? Now, what am I getting out with this? When you see an opportunity, take advantage first, right? The opportunity in my post was so that they can share a screenshot of their CVs in my response. I do these things intentionally so that when you share those things and HR starts coming to my page, they will see your CV and can immediately call you up and say, oh, okay, this is my CV. Oh, uh, is it, uh, this is my number, you know, based on that comment, not to me. When you send it to just me, I'm the only one that will see it. When you post it under my, po under my messages, a lot of HR will see it and then call people up. I've gotten several messages of, oh, uh, I saw this person under your comment session and I've called them uh, and they've uh, come to the office and done an interview with us. They will be resuming in two weeks. I like such statements from employers. This is why I keep on posting and I keep on pushing the jobs. Now, let me give you some very funny tips that can get you a job faster in Nigeria of today. It is knowing your recruiter. That one particular tip will give you a route faster to the jobs more than several other people. Why am I saying this? Network building is way more important than a lot of other things. Of course, your CV is very good. It's very necessary, right? Uh, a good LinkedIn page is very important. I'm not going to dwell on all those stories and tell you, oh, your LinkedIn will do A, B, C, and D. Yes, it will do. It will create opportunities for you. It will create the chance to be seen. Employers will call you if you have a good LinkedIn profile, if you have a good LinkedIn page, if you engage with a lot of people, like you post and you, know, you talk about things, they will engage you, right? But barring CVs, barring LinkedIn profile, barring cover letters, and barring a few other things that will get you the, the route, the normal route of application, building a network is way, way, way more important than a lot of things. Now, imagine gifts uh, in my network, not just my network connection on LinkedIn. I'm talking about, you know, he has a rapport with me. We talk, right? You know, if I post something, gifts can come to my WhatsApp and say, ah, Mr. David, I saw something you posted. Oh, I'm interested in that, you know, I'm qualified for it. And I say, okay, let me see your CV, right? And gift will be the first person that I probably will check his CV because he knows me. Hmm? The other guys will have applied via the official email address and it's storing there in my inbox. But Gift will have shared his own via my WhatsApp or my LinkedIn page and I'll have read it immediately and say, okay, Gift, you are qualified. I'll shortlist you for the role. You see, it is a network that he has that he is using. It is a relationship he has with me that he has built over time that he is taking advantage of. Now, here is something about building a relationship with your network. Don't always tell them about your problems. Don't always do that. Don't always bring a problem to their table. Find a common interest. What do they like that you like? Sport, uh, tech, finance, uh, clothes, uh, politics, uh, culture, history. Something that unites all of us. When you can find that unity spot, when you can find that thing that makes them talk normally without being official, 
and they will go on and on with you and discuss and argue. You see the way guys watch football and they talk about it so passionately. Some guys, they like passion that way. I've seen ladies talk about football. I've seen them talk about food. Some guys, they talk about food in a very passionate way. I'm like, oh my God, you like food so much. Oh, I like food too. Oh, wow. Can you cook this? Can you cook that? Something that makes you guys talk, makes people talk without being official. Yeah? You build your rapport that way steadily. They remember you a lot more than the guy that just send them a CV without them asking for it. They remember you more than people that will just text you. Say, oh, I've been seeing you post. Oh, uh, I'm in need of a job right now. How can you give me a job right now? I will read your post and tell you, join my group and I will go. Because there are hundreds of you with that same request. I told guys that I get three messages a lot. And they are, I need a job. Can you help with my CV? I need a job urgently. Those are the kind of messages I get more and more and more. So it means I have already developed a template response to those kind of messages because it's the same request. It takes all of my time. Why there's actually the real work I'm supposed to be doing. But you know, I still respond to them, but I will just direct you to my group because that's where we post all our jobs, right? So what I'm trying to say is, if it's just two or three recruiters that you are connected to and you have a relationship with, take it serious. Make them be like your friend. Make them people you check up on. Now, it doesn't now mean you will not turn into a routine checkup. Like every time you send them a paragraph about how they are doing. Okay, so by I've said about me getting married this month. And some guys have been wishing me, you know, congratulations and blah and all that kind of thing, which is, you know, I, it's good. It's a good gesture, right? Now, here is the thing. Some guys will just come out of the blues and talk to you in a very different way and make a request. And then you respond to it because they came in a very pleasing manner. Yeah? But it doesn't work all the time. What works best is the person you have a relationship with. I'm buttressing on this point because a lot of people don't think it is the right thing to do. Or maybe they don't, not that they don't think. They know it, but they don't apply it. Because I've said it several times. It's like they listen to what I say, but they don't do what I tell them. They just do whatever comes to their mind whenever they need that job, which is very bad. Right now, so let's keep going. One thing that you also need to put in mind is interviews. People do not prepare for interviews at all. I have seen candidates walking to an interview unprepared. Now, preparation goes beyond knowing what to say, it enters how you dress to that interview. You cannot just walk in with your t-shirt and button, uh, t-shirt and slippers and jeans. It's not the garage. You cannot just walk in with your buttons fly, you know, air on cam and all that kind of thing. No, please, a bit of decorum. Now, get this clearly. Some jobs will arrange you that you can come with your jeans and your t-shirt. They allow that, is their, is their culture. They won't give you a hooded when you get employed. Tech people, you know, a lot of startups. But so many jobs don't allow that yet. They are still in a session where they have dress codes from Monday to Friday. So you need to be able to fit into that kind of culture and dress in a manner that fits, you know, what they want. Now, guys, in August this year, I launched a book. That, that book was, is called uh, Their Applicant. Now, it talks about everything you need to do as a job seeker to leverage on connections, to leverage on selling, to leverage on building relationships to job applications, 
So use of LinkedIn, use of social media as a tool for finding and searching for jobs. Very short and very straight to the point books. We gave it out to so many people to read. You know, they actually they bought it and they gave us very, very great reviews about what they found. I come to seminars like this and I talk about exactly everything that I've written on the book. Even though I'll be talking about it in a very short and abrupt manner because of course I cannot read a 50 page booklet for you in one city. <laughs> it will be somehow, right? But the book is out there. It's on my LinkedIn page. You can get one for yourself and sit down and read all through and see exactly the points I'm trying to make. I think it has like seven chapters or thereabouts. Straight to the point, easy to read. Why am I talking about that? It feels like people don't really like to read anymore. You know, when they tell you a book, a chapter a day increases your knowledge base, right? If you read today, you get something new. Sometimes just pick up a book and just read one after the other. Just read the chapters and see what you get in each chapter. You know, it's not like you have to read the 400 pages once. You read and then you keep reading. You read a chapter today, another chapter tomorrow, and the next chapter you keep getting them and keep putting them in because they will favor you in the long run, right? This is what I tell most of them. So uh, you see an article, you see, uh, what's that thing called? You see a post, you see uh, a small booklet, and you think, oh, there's no need to read it because it's probably too long or something. It's at your detriment most times. What you need to do is take whatever information that has been put in the book and then make use of it because it is very, very key. It is way, way more important for, uh, for you. You know, because you are. Uh, hello, Mr. David. I see that. This is something that I have over the time buttressed. Reading should be a part of our daily lives as a job seeker. You want to ask me about practical steps to getting a job? Read a lot. Two, apply for jobs that you qualify for. Three, get as much as possible qualifications. Four, network with people and attend events like this. Five, be available. Six, be respectable. Seven, be proactive. So I can keep listing the practical things you can do when searching for a job. But the reason I don't list all this thing is it makes us lazy. It makes us don't want to do anything. Okay, guys, I want to do something. If you are on this session and uh, you've been listening to me for the past, say, 30, 35 minutes, uh, you have a question, you have an observation, you have something you want to say, uh, so I can answer some questions before I go on. I want to be very brief as possible. Now, you don't need to speak. You can just go to the chat and type you know, some of the questions or some of the observation. And I will take them uh, before I continue because I don't want to run through like that. I want to be sure that I'm speaking to people and they are listening and they are getting something and they are noting something down. So give, I want to open the floor for a few questions, uh, five minutes gap, and then I'll continue with the answers. So these answers will help with some other pointers because I was looking through uh the uh, they shared a, a template to me you know they shared some excel sheets and there were so many people that, that put their names there close to 45 or 46 people wrote their names in and they were asking them question about when last they applied for a job uh, how many interviews have they gone for you know 
uh, what was the discussion about? And I saw similar, similar, similar things. Qualification, experience issues, you know, being able to uh, uh, get the, the job, you know, like they've not got someone since they've been applying, they've applied for X, Y, Z number. So let me open the floor. Let's ask a few questions. And if we don't, I have a question in my mind, but I'll give us five minutes. Uh, type your questions out. I don't think we should, you know, uh, except you just want to put your, I, I don't think our mics are all on, but we can just ask our question in the text and I'll ask my question at the end and then I'll get some answers and I'll, you know, run us through a couple of more minutes uh, before I, you know, finalize my own session and leave you guys to ponder on what I've said, how you can use it and the best way to go about that. All right, let's start. Maybe I should come reading you whose name. Oh, okay. I can't even see the names there, but yeah. A couple of them. Gift, are you, so here? Guys, are you still here with me? Yeah, I'm here. So, guys, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can drop this, the question in the comment uh, section. So, okay. as I said, he said he gives you guys five minutes, so we'll be expecting a question from any of any of Yeah. Okay. okay. Good, afternoon. Someone... Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, please, sir. My name is uh, Ridwan. Please, okay. sir, my, my question is, what should a fresh graduate do that just finished NYSE but has a little experience while in NYSE school because the city is so scanty. So, so, scanty. Uh, so a fresh, um, real one, is this your, okay, this one is for gift. I thought it was real one, I posted it. So you're talking about what can a fresh graduate do, right? Uh, because about experience, but your CV is scanty, right? Yes. Okay. So let me let, let me give you a, a, a feedback or like something else about how to go about that. Uh, so when I was in school, right? Uh, aside going to class, I was in some organizations, right? Uh, it's either you are in, in a church or you are going to the mosque, or you belong to some other organizations. Everybody belongs to something, but I know some guys that didn't belong to anything. Now, a fresh graduate originally is not supposed to have any experience. That's the first point. But we know that most of these jobs that we say fresh graduate, they'll be asking you for two years experience or three years experience. And you'll be like, but you said fresh graduate. Where am I going to get that experience from? So here is how you can beat that trap. As a student, there are some things that you did that we can accumulate as experience, right? That we can put together to make you stand a chance. One is for those of you that do the six month CUS or internship program, you have an opportunity there to properly package that. So don't just write it as internship, yeah? You know, you put it on a graduate internship, right? Put the company you work, and then what you did in like four or five bullet points, uh, and then try to quantify your experience. When I say quantify your experience, I mean use numbers use percentages, express responsibility. If you made money, talk about the money you made for the company. If we're part of a team that did a project, talk about the project. If you're part of a, a unit, talk about what you guys did. When they were reading my, uh, what's that thing called, my profile, they said oh. I was part uh, you know, recruitment of 1,200 people in eight weeks. That is the kind of quantification you need to do on your CV. So that when I read it, I know what you did, I know how long you did it for, I know the role you played. Mm -hmm. So don't blank your CV. The reason your CV is scanty is because you don't put things in it. In your experience ladder, it's always empty because you don't put anything in it. Secondly, if you are a fresh graduate, that means you done final year, right? And you did project, you did research in your final year. That can come under research experience, right? But you can talk about your final year project, what you did, if you traveled, if you did survey, 
if you had to go and you know do some experiment, if you had to go and maybe buy some things, or you have to go out, you know, conduct interviews, find a way to quantify everything you did in four to five bullet points and put it under experience. So look at me. Experience will have internships. You put your undergraduate internship there. Research experience, you put your final year experience as a research student under that column. For those that have done NYSC, that is also an internship experience. You call it graduate internship. You quantify it well. And don't just write NYSC. Please put graduate internship. You worked for one year and you just throw it away like that all in the name of NYC, right? Now you put the place you work, you put what you did, and what you achieved. I've given you three things that could give you up to two years experience, regardless of working properly for somebody. Now, let's go back to those that have been working before they graduated. You can really put that to good use. Let's talk about those that have leadership positions in school. When you finish school, that leadership position automatically turns to leadership experience. You were head of a committee. You were head of a fundraising team. You were part of this group that executed a project. You did all week. You raised money. Uh, you did. Uh, you were in fellowship. You were in the mosque. You were in JCI. You were in ISEC. You were in Pathfinder. You were in so many things. Several, several, several. Right? Those are experience that, if well written and well quantified, will make your CV not scanty. It will make them desirable and make them something that every recruiter wants to speak of. Real one, can you hear me still? Yes, I'm hearing you clearly. I'm, I'm you right follow what I've just said. I'm sure your CV will be in the third page already by now. Oh, All the things I've said. So there's something like your CV is scanty. So someone said, uh, my my what what should a fresh graduate with only ex, with only an experience? Uh, uh, sorry, you, sir. I uh, sorry, sir. The question is not complete yet. Like okay. I have another question on that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now my okay. question is. Okay. Okay, now my question is, what of the first graduate now? Let's say someone studied microbiology and the person, based on the nature of the country, the country maybe the country is not welcoming such kind of course. And the person now wants to apply for another another course and another career path, but has a little experience. Um, so what should, what should the person do? Since the CV Wait, is not is not You want to apply for a job or you want to apply for another course? No, not another course, for a job. But the job is not directly related to what you studied in school. So here is something that most companies wouldn't even do. Uh, faults where you have experience, you 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 studied from or um, the degree you have. A lot of employers have left that notion of uh, oh you did botany that means you can't do anything in administration. No, you can't do a lot of things. So it is what you project actually that the employer will look at. If you did, uh, let me say, uh, marine biology and fishery, right? And you are trying to apply for a consulting work, you know that even KPM, you just put it there, science is, right? Even the uh, Procter and Gamble, PNG, they put it there, science is, they don't, they don't put which kind of course you study. They will say pure sciences and social sciences. It is your book smart that you can able to convert to analysis smart that they want, not application of botany, of marine biology and fishery. You're working with, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, climate change people, if you study that kind of courses. But you can offer yourself to some other companies the way you put your leg forward. This is where your CV writing is important. This is where your LinkedIn profile are important. Because you, you, you already have a bad, not, I, I won't call it a bad leg forward. The course doesn't correlate, but it doesn't make you not able to apply for other jobs. There are so many who that will take you on as long as you can scale their interviews. Rewan, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, great. So that should not be an hindrance for you, fresh or no fresh. If you did all the things I've just told you about and then you send your CV, 
I'm sure they'll be looking at all those other things aside from marine biology degree. You've left school already. You've not done other things. Marine biology shouldn't hold you back. Uh, let me read this question. How does this speak Thanks. about the person where? Thank you so much, uh, sir. Yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Yeah, less than one year company experience. For this. So you see, it's still, this, these ones are still buzzed. It boils down to how you write your CV, what you wrote on your CV. I mean, probably just discuss quickly about CV you know, for a few minutes and then uh, I'll, I'll leave us. Now, some applicants applied for jobs they qualified for, prepared, and successfully went for the interview. The HR promised the feedback, but yet no feedback at all. <laughs> no feedback was sent. Uh, sent uh, okay, so here's the thing. What should the job seeker do in this regard? So here's one thing you need to remember. It is important that they send you the feedback, right? It is very important. But this is the assumption I leave. By. You might not get that feedback. Yeah, reason is this. Uh, They've sent out the job, right? Uh, and 100 people have applied for that job. Yeah? Now, I'm not making excuses for them about not sending you a feedback. You know, everybody is faulty in that axis. You know, we don't even send feedback to anybody. But here is what I tell my guys, my people that see, when you apply for a job and you don't get feedback, move on. When you apply for a job and you get a feedback, they call you to come and uh, do the interview. You do the interview and then they don't give you feedback. Give them like two weeks. If you have the contact of the uh, HR manager, send to them. Now that's for regular, regular companies. Multinationals might take longer time. For example, if you apply for a GE job or Google job or maybe Procter & Gamble or you know, um, uh, was it, KPMG, you don't have to remind them every time. They have a system that works. They will get back to you if you qualify, right? So just leave them be. Following them up might give you a necessary edit. So apply for a job, prepare, go for the interview, scale it, go back home and continue as if nothing happened. If they contact you, congratulations. Go back and do the next stage and get your job. If they don't, move forward. Don't be stuck on, oh, they've not called me back. They've not reached out to me. I'm worried they might not call me. You are going to give yourself a headache, something you don't need because you are still applying for jobs and you want to be fresh. You still want to have that vibe so that you can be better prepared for the next job. Right now in job search, your job or your function is to go from one interview to the other with your A game, with your best foot forward not bothering about whether they called you back or they don't call you back. All right, guys, thank you for the questions. It's, it's key. Hi, wanna... please, I have a question, sir. All right, please go ahead. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, um, my question is, and, and it's actually, it's really been bothering me. I went for this interview a couple of weeks ago and I know I, I did, really well because the HR, the lady who interviewed me already told me congratulations and all of that. And, you know, I came back home expecting for, I mean, positive results and uh, as it were. Okay, but um, before the interview, the interview was in three stages. Now at the second stages, I came in contact. At the second stage, I came in contact with someone, one of the HR, and he said, he said to me that, I'm too good to be a regular employee. He wants me on the business um, associate or business executive platform. He doesn't want me on the list of regular employee. So I told him, no, I want to be a regular employee. You know, I want to start from somewhere. I want to start from there, you know, to gain experience and all of that. Okay, now in a bit of cut, long story short, I think um, he probably manipulated on my interview results with the lady who interviewed me at the last stage, you know, because ultimately he he's like an overall, like he's higher than her. I mean, talking about Kada, okay, he's okay. higher than her. So I want to believe he manipulated my results because up until this minute I'm talking to you, I've not been contacted back. Fine, I have the um, um, direct connection with him. You know, he got my contacts and then we talk okay. time to time. 
So I, I, I had this boldness and, and, and enthusiasm to ask him what happened because I was, mm. I was good of all the other applicants and I was even told congratulations there. Mm. All the preparations have already been made. I mean, the lady was practically choosing for me like um, a place close to my um, location of residence and also what happened. And then he told me, he told me clearly that he told me he wants me to be on the business executive, um, what's it called, to platform. He doesn't want me as a regular employee. So there was no way he was going to let that um, appointment come through. So he did something because whether I like it or not, I have to come back and be um, a business associate with him. I mean, I'm trying not to go crazy. I'm trying not to lose my mind, but that has always, like, I... I don't like it. Maybe I, I, I thought to ask you, maybe you can explain further to me what happened or why would a HR do that to me? Quick question. Uh, what do they do? Consulting. They consult for organizations and... and um... Okay, so here, here's one question I have for you. Um, yes, sir. I find something. The role you applied for, what was the role? Secretary. Secretary. Yes, sir. All right. So um, here is something. Uh, normally, you know, normal practice will see them give you that role, right? You know. Yes, sir. Since they've already told you congratulations and all that kind of thing. Now, when you mentioned this clause about uh, you know, the head of the company wanting, wanting you to move from just a secretarial role to a business associate role. And then they now deny you, you know, the role is, is it doesn't sound very straightforward, right? Because you could easily have gone in as a secretary and they could easily have just, uh, also made you work as a business associate, you know, while still working as a secretary. It's consulting. It can't be that uh, complicated. You understand? So it's... No, hello, not... sir. Yeah. Um, they consult um, for other companies and organizations, you know, they you know, they interview candidates and, and then pick and then send to those organizations that need their services, oh, not working like for them there. Yes, sir. Company. Exactly, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Uh, okay. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, okay. I will get, we'll discuss about that. There's, I'll tell, I'll tell a gift how you can get across to me. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, it is not, Fair, it is not straightforward, regardless it is of that kind of thing. If a candidate qualifies for a job and you can say that you should give her that role, it's as easy as that. I'm that plain when I do this. I don't even intervene. I let the company do the selection process, right? So they pick people straight up. Uh, I, think I, I, I think I see what happened in this situation. Uh, I will try, I'm trying not to um, paint a bad picture of what happened, but it, it doesn't seem very fair. It's, sorry about that kind of incident. It's not the usual practice. Uh, they, they probably want you to work for them and not for the company they're going to send you for. You know, but it's, it's just something here and there. It, it, it shouldn't be on a good day. You should get the job. Um, you know, you should be working. So what one positive for you is that you are qualified for the role you are applying for. So yes, stick that in your head. Stick that in your head and let that be your driving force. Uh, so you know the kind of jobs you can apply for that you qualify for. Uh, there are still a lot of opportunities out there. I will drop a link to my group. In the, you guys can join the group. We post several jobs there. I'll drop my profile as well. You guys can reach out to me and we'll talk about that. But by then, it's, it's not the regular practice. Uh, I see other hands up. Uh, do we have questions still so we can keep taking them? Because I think I just want to take questions and explain if you want to us. Yeah, yes. I, know I can hear you. My name is Sarah. Hello. 
Um, two people are talking consecutively. One person should stop. Sarah, continue. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity, first of all. Um, my confusion about this, um, assuming you, you found a role which you feel you're going to be a great fit, you know, um, mm. or you could be one, but you have this hindrance of uh, MBA, compulsory, mandatory, MSc, mandatory, but it's, it's a, a role you know you're fit for. How do you navigate it? How do you navigate past that uh, um, mandatory, you know, requirement? Because, you know, in, in real life, you know, just, uh, of course, we go to school to learn and all that, but when it comes to the practice, you know, in the field, yeah. It becomes a different ball game, okay. Mm -hmm. So that uh, mandatory requirement minus the, the the usual basic qualification you put in your H N D, okay. But now you have that limitation of you've seen something, you know, you're quite experienced on that field, but that limitation comes in. That limitation right. of M B A M S C. So how do you navigate yeah. through it? So it's a, it's a complicated situation because these companies do that now. So I was helping uh, a company to recruit for, uh, how do I call it, head of operations, yeah. And then they told me that they wanted someone that has an MBA. And then I told them that, yeah, it's fine. But if I get someone that is as, is as experienced enough for what you are trying to do, I will still push them in. You understand? So they, uh, they, they, they said, okay, fine. So I sent them three CVs. Out of the three, two had MBAs, one didn't have. Okay. But the one that did not have had all the experience they needed. Okay. It was a perfect fit for the job. And they called back and said, this person also have MBA. This person has MBA. This person has my experience. What should we do? I said, if you leave it up to me, I'm choosing the one that has no MBA because she has every other thing that you need. MBA is a degree like DSC. Yeah. It's application that matters. And she has applied it already over the course of the year. So you need the recruiter who is doing that particular process to be convinced about your qualification for that role. Or you need to be able to get across to the person that posted the role from the original company. This is where networking and relationships matter. Yeah. What I would do as a person is go and look for that person, the company. There will be an HR person, somebody in on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is your best place. Go there, find the person's name or whatever they have, connect with them and discuss with them about this because there's no way to barricade that kind of thing. Yeah. Because you are applying from the regular means. The only way is to know somebody that works in the company and posted the role. And then that is the convince that is where you can say, Oh, change your mind about this. I'm fit for this role because I have A, B, C, and D. This yeah. one that I don't have shouldn't deter or remove me from this opportunity. So well, there you have it. Okay. Mm, so find the person and um, you, you you will be fine. Uh, okay. it, it's not that hard. I've okay. done it with several people. I've found both of them and found the connection and they took it from there. Uh, what should we do about those that request? Okay, let me address this question. You see, uh, if you want to buy food, right? You can either choose to buy food on the roadside or you go into a proper canteen. Yeah? I'll change the story. These guys are agencies. They are not recruitment firms. This is why they collect money from your hands or ask you to pay money. And it is not sensible. I preach against that thing. It's a rubbish practice. You know, I've been asked several times, even candidates will come to me and say, oh, sir, can we give you 10% of our salary to get a job? And I'll tell them I don't do such things. I don't do such things. What I do is 
check your CV if you are available to qualify. I send you to the candidate the company. The company pays me, not you. You understand? So I tell them that these are the way these things work. There are two things. There's something called, and then the the the, the outsourcing firm now you know employs people and then pay them on behalf of the company, and you know controls them. They are like the HR for that other company. That's outsourcing. A lot of companies do that. That is normal. You know. And the regular recruitment is you pay us, and then we employ people for your for, for you. Those are regular process. But these guys that say, oh, bring 30K, and then we'll help you find a job, or you will give us 15% uh, of your first three months salary. That is outright nonsense. I've seen people do it, and I've anytime they tell me I rebuke them, like you don't, this is you are not, this is not how to do things. You're inconveniencing these people. It's not a modeling agency or a Nollywood studios where you have to pay for audition so that you can get the role or something. No, it is a wrong practice. And I, I don't stand with such practices. It's really, really not a very good thing to do to anybody looking for a job. Any other question? I still see some hands, Nelly Sparks yes, and sir. somebody else. Yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Please, in just one minute, I want to get your reaction on the situation where, after passing a first and second interview because of your CV, plus I'm talking about myself now, yeah. and um, I keep having this issue of how much am I to pay you, how much am I to pay you, and I give a range in the two conditions, in the two instances, I give a range from so so amount to so amount, and all of a sudden, after the second time, I stopped getting calls. Yeah, yeah, I stopped getting calls from the HR. So would you, in your own wisdom, would you assume in this case that such a job offer is gone for good? Because it's just like, I see it like- wait, wait, wait. Let me give something that. clear, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so before you, before you, yeah. The range you talk about is your salary expectation. Expectation, yeah, of course, sir. Of course, sir. So, okay, continue. I, I just don't know why after this is two weeks. Today, today, yesterday, Friday, it was two weeks. After the second phase, which I qualified, I was I got okay. messages that I qualify for the next stage, I qualify for this stage, you know? And all of a sudden, I think so, I'm seeing it like, like what, I'm, what I'm asking from you now is, would you, if you are me, would you assume that this job offer is gone just because of this? Yes. And it is gone. gone. Okay. It is okay. gone. Yeah, because they probably can't pay what you're asking for. Okay. What I was mm. a little bit skeptical, I expected them to make an offer at least. You know, I wouldn't just say this and relax. So, uh, can I advise you? Can I advise you? Right away, sir. First, sir. Okay. Here's what you would do. Before you go for any interview, for any role, after preparing all the variations you can prepare for, find people that have worked in that office and ask them what the salary of the last guy was before you go in. Okay. Another thing you need to do is, that particular role has an industry standard. For example, uh, maybe like social media, social media person for a company, there's a range they give it, you know, those are what. Ask around, find an average, have both of them in mind. Compare it with what you have in mind. If it's too far off. Come down a bit. Yeah, well, not come down a bit. When they ask you for salary range, you ask them that, is there an offer on the ground? Like, you are willing to, you know, accept the offer that they have. I did. I Let did them give you the offer. So wait, I'm not done yet. If you say that to them, some might give you an offer, some might not. But if they don't give you an offer, if you have found out how much the last person was earning, if it's something you can do that, that works for you, give them a range in that particular part so they can negotiate with you further. So why am I saying this? If somebody that was working there was earning maybe 70000 Right, and then you came and say you want 150k, they won't negotiate with you, they will just move on to the next person. 
But if you say, oh, you want 85,000, they'll tell you, well, uh, the, the offer for this role is uh, 70K actually. You know, they'll, make, they'll, they'll come out to you clearly. Every job has a salary offer. Every, there's no job that doesn't have a salary expectation. They have a salary already. They just want to see if you are not going to shoot beyond, or maybe they can, and it's not very cool. Tell people what their salary should be, you know, so that they can know that, oh, this is still meant for me, or this is not still meant for me, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, yeah, that, that should be all for that question. I think there's someone, someone is raising their hand. Uh, I have another question here or something. Oh, wow. This is a, this is an epistle. Uh, what can someone do to a CV that, uh, that has work experience less than a year in three different places? Oh my God. So make those things, call them project experiences. Just put project on top of all of them because they are, they are so short. So it doesn't look like you're jumping from one place to the other. I've applied for several jobs as at last year. I was called for some interviews. I attended the very important ones and ignored a few because I wanted to concentrate on my MSc. And now I'm almost done with my MSc. I've been applying throughout this year for both those related to my area, but I have not been called for interviews and I have little experience, but I have been involved in active volunteering, various NGOs. Last September, I haven't attended Fidelity Aptitude and I was told I passed and will be called early this year uh till today i haven't been called uh you know that the pandemic the protest a lot of things happened in the country is you know shaking so many organizations and all that kind of thing so that might be the reason you've not been called most likely the pandemic you know the coronavirus crisis we have so most likely a lot of people are letting people go so it's hard one thing you need to do is find a way to capture all this your experience and volunteering into a very good CV. Uh, and so that when you're applying, you're applying well. Since you have been passing all these tests, you should be able to get something. You need to up your game to the next thing called um, networking with the right set of people. It's, it seems complicated, but it's doable. Everybody does it, I do it every time. Does NYC add up as part of experience? Yes, I have a mantra. It's called expectation is expectation. And experience is experience. Good afternoon, sir. Please, I have been attending. Well, getting a job is most likely up to you. You need to apply for what you can do, you know, not what you assume you can do. And I've seen people that say they are qualified. Actually, they are qualified. But when you see their CV, it looks like a market woman CV. It looks like someone that has no inclination about the job. See, it starts from how you represent yourself. You cannot just tell me you are qualified. And then I look at your CV, it looks like you went to a business center to do it. I will not call you back. See, aesthetics, little things like your CV will go a long way in getting you an interview slot. Then you can talk about how great you are when you get there. But before that time, no one knows about your greatness until they see it. And how do they see it? You already know the answer. I graduated with the first class and I've taken some course too. You will get a job. You will get a job. I appreciate. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Why does occasion affect job offer? Because of um, they don't want you to come late to work. They don't want excuses. They don't want you falling sick and taking leave and all that kind of thing. And even though they are not really valid, but personally, I tell you to apply to a job that's close to your house. It will kill you mentally to be going to and fro. I hate going about. I've gone to the mainland. I stay in Acha. I've gone to the mainland a lot this month, and I've been sick twice. Because of that, I rarely leave the area. My office is a stone throw from where I stay. I like my sense intact. I like my body intact. So I try to go near a rest place. So yeah, uh, I know you just want to get something doing. But after like two months, you'll be tired. Mm, please, for your mental health sake, let's uh, stay close to our house. 
uh, any other question? Because it looks like I'm rounding up. People have drained my battery, but it was worth it. At least I can answer people's questions and uh, solve their problems the best way I can. And I've also put uh, my group on the chat box, and I've also put my link. That's my LinkedIn page. So you can see what I post, and you can take advantage of whatever you can take advantage of, and laugh as well, because I post some funny stuff also. But yeah, majorly jobs. Uh, any other question? I want to round up and uh, exit the building. Okay, I think there's a comment. Let me read that. What do you have to say for employer who did not salary? <laughs> <laughs> it's just very petty of them. Even though, even though the HR will give you a reason they are doing that, you know, uh, they say they parate your salary for missing work. But if you, yeah, they say if you go late three times, they will count it as one absentee. Like one absenteeism of you that you absent for one day and deduct your salary. Yes. HR, some HRs have that in their policy book and all that kind of thing that they wrote for the company when they joined them. So yeah, but you know, communication is key. If you have rapport with your online manager, those kind of things won't be an issue for you. But some companies still make that thing stressful for a lot of employees. They're already stressed. Any other question? Gift? Um. It have sense of no question. I think um, the question has, is, uh, is getting too much. I don't know. Um, Mr. David, I believe you yeah. want to move on with your session because remember you said you want to um, ask a question, yeah. then, then I jump yeah. back into your topic. I'll I just think briefly I talk about... Ask. Yeah, yeah. Maybe last... after. No, you know okay. why I let them ask questions? Because I've already answered some of the questions of the new session. There's a CV I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, so that's why I let them ask the question ahead. So I'll just talk about a few things. So yeah, I will briefly talk about the CV. I'll be very brief, very, very brief. So this is what your CV is supposed to do. It's supposed to make sure that you get called. So to help yourself, what you need to do is make sure your CV represent a better version of you when you send that. Now, it doesn't mean you should lie on your CV or exaggerate. It means make it reasonably done. Make it look good, not colorful, presentable. Black and white looks presentable if you do it well. Look at templates online. Your CV is your first step into a job. If your CV is good, you apply for a job you are qualified for, they see it, it looks good, they will shortlist you. But I can tell you that candidates don't listen. At least the one I know, and I've spoken to close to 10,000 of them in like uh, eight years of my career in recruitment and working and in the jobs and doing all those things. Candidates don't listen. They just do what they like, you know? I keep shouting about having a good CV. Now, somebody will send you a CV that they copied and then they come to interviews and they, they fail woefully. I sent seven candidates to a particular job interview one time and none of them got the job because their CV was so good, it was better than them. When they got there, they couldn't defend what they wrote. So if your CV has been done to a point where it's so good, the next thing you need to do is read your CV as if that CV is a Bible or a book or a novel that you like the most so that when you go for the job and they ask you a question, you already know because you've read the CV. Now, this means a true representation of yourself, of your skills, of your experiences, of the project you've done, of your abilities, your certifications, your qualifications in two pages at the most. And that is what a CV does. Your CV is your marketing tool. It's the advert that Google places. It's the advert that Apple will put out to make sure you queue and buy their phone. That is the same thing a CV does. And we as recruiter, if you give us your CV, we look at it as an advert. If it doesn't speak volume about you, it will be trashed. 
if he speaks so much about you, it will be kept under wraps and you will be called. But a lot of guys just write whatever they want. Or they just write something that looks good in their head. And then it doesn't make sense when it gets to the employer. See, go online and check standard templates for CVs and ensure that whatever you send to the employer is something that you are proud of, right? That's briefly our CV. LinkedIn has become one of the most effective platform when it comes to job search, connections, relationship building, and opportunities. Make use of LinkedIn effectively. Be active on LinkedIn, engage steady, comments, post something about your career, about your own uh, career path, about the jobs that you want to do, about the projects you like to do, and you're on the right path to something. Lastly, before I go away, preparation is important. If you don't prepare, you will fail, and you will fail woefully. And I mean it with every of my breath. Hello, are you still there, sir? Hello, Mr. David. Hello. I think his battery is drained. Possibly. Okay. If you don't prepare your failure will important, you don't have to yes, be the best sir. candidate. Let's talk. Um, he's out now. Let's give him some minutes for him to come back on board. So pending when he comes back online, um, I'd love to introduce um, the Executive Secretary of Knowledge Exchange Center, um, Mr. Gogo Akborido. He has some announcements to make and um, trust me, you don't want to miss um, this, uh, this session. It's going to be an, a very, very impactful one. So uh, I'd love, I love to introduce him to come on board. So Mr. Gogo, pending when uh, Mr. David comes on board, I'd love you to, um, to come on board and then share um, your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, gift, I am back. Okay, he's back, awesome. Welcome. Yeah, let me just round up so that I can take over. Uh, my final point is being prepared will get you the job faster than any other route. If you are prepared, I can call you tonight and then you attend the interview and you get the job. But if you are not, you'll be asking me to give you three or four days, right? Preparation means you are available and you are qualified. Guys, you can get this job just keep at it and put a bit of more effort and um, it will come through. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of KEC's project. They do a good work. Uh, this is why I'm part and I'm always around whenever they need me. All right, gift. this is where I stop. I will see you guys some other time. Okay, um, thank you so much, Mr. David. And it's really an impact field um, session. And I believe we all here have really, really learned a lot uh, pertaining our CV and, and getting a job as well. So we want to say a huge and a big thank you to you, sir. So um, Mr. Agogo is going to be coming um, on board very soon. About pending when it comes on, I'm going to share a link on this, on the group now. On the comment session now, where um, we're going to, um, it's a link that's um, 
I'm coming, let me share it now. So I'm gonna give a feedback uh, about this uh, session, how it is and how we can improve going forward. So I just shared the link on the comment section now. So you can click on it or copy it when the whole training is over, uh, you can just go to it and then fill in the feedback form. So only take uh, five um, few minutes of your time, and really appreciate it if you uh, take that few minutes of your time to fill the form. So uh, Mr. Gogo uh, is going to be joining us now to share um, um, the information and also um, um, everything relating to this uh, program as well. So um, Mr. Gogo, are you online? Mr. Gogo. Please let's give Mr. Gogo some minutes and it will be here shortly. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Sorry, let me just adjust minutes. Just a couple of minutes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, good afternoon. Can. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I've been listening quietly to the session, uh, and I'm hoping that uh, each and every one of you have learned uh, something uh, uh, throughout the session uh, today. Uh, David has done a lot of justice. I, I mean, this is his field. This is what he does every day. He recruits uh, and he speaks to uh, job seekers uh, uh, about how to get job. I think you should take advantage of his platform, uh, his Telegram, his LinkedIn, check him out on LinkedIn. I are going to get really, really quality value uh, uh, if, when you connect to him. That I can promise you because uh, I, I've learned so much, so much from him, and we, we work together as as partner. So I'm going to, I will try as much as possible not to take much of your time, but I would like to highlight some things that are very critical in finding a job. Very, very critical. And some of these things I'm going to be sharing with you are things that are not common. People don't often talk about them. You see, when people talk about job, getting a job, I know some of the things that people talk about is CV, uh, LinkedIn, cover letter, interview. Now, these are very, very important. Don't, don't get me wrong. Very, very important things. However, there's there are other soft aspect of finding a job that is the foundation for all this CV writing and everything. Once you don't get that foundation, you are, you are going to struggle, I, I tell you the truth, because I've been there. You are really, really going to struggle. Now, let, 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 let me start like this. Before you won't think of looking for a job or you have been looking for a job, you, mu you, you must ask yourself one important question. Why should they hire me? Why should they hire me? Let me re-ask that question. Know what you know about yourself. If you're an employer, would you yourself hire you? Would you yourself hire you knowing what you know about yourself? This is no sentiment. Assuming you're a businessman, you have a company, you have an organization, and what is critical for you, you're you are not a charity organization. You need somebody, let's say a salesperson, or whatever position it is that you are applying for. Would you hire you? I, I, I'm just asking that question. Do you hire you? So I, I would like to get comment on this because the foundation of what I want to share is based on this. Think about that question clearly. Would you? hire you, assuming you have a company, you have an organization, would you hire you? And if the answer is yes, why? If the answer is no, why? So let's have a, a few comments and let, let's have this discussion. 
I, I don't I don't want to make this just talking, 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 talking. Let's have an interactive uh, session. And let's be honest with ourselves. There, there's no need uh, deceiving ourselves. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hello, okay. Hello, hello sir. Yeah, I can hey. hear you loud and clear. Okay. My name is Sarah, Sarah Ogele. So okay. to your question, if uh, I was happen to be an employer, if I, I will hire myself, right? Yeah. Yes. The answer is capital, yes. Yes, I'll okay. hire myself. <clears throat> yes, I'll hire myself because I know I've uh, built myself. Although uh, my foundation, I, I started as a HND, but it wasn't like, a, it was a more of a part-time program, okay? Because when I came for to work in an organization um, as an intern, you know, the, the, the fire was, uh, quite burning, very, very active. And it happened that they, they needed someone at that particular time. Okay. okay, so they actually requested that, that they would give me time to finish my HND, but that they wouldn't want to let me go. Okay, so I stayed okay. in that place. I finished, as soon as I finished the, the, the IT, I was given um, a job, okay. And uh, along the line, I also embraced all added roles of higher um, personnel. Okay. You know, at the minimum was a uh, grade ten, who happened to be a chief supervisor. Okay, so and I put in my okay. best. From there, I won a couple of. In fact, I won awards. Each department I've been oh. to, I actually won okay. awards irrespective of the fact that I can go through the usual straight up um, foundation of, okay, you finish your OND, you did your IT, then you go back to school, you obtain your HND, okay. So I, I kept souring, even at the point where um, due to economic reasons and the instabilities caused by the government with their policies, it started having a toll on the company and uh, also personal issues on the fact that I've been in that organization for almost 19 years. So I wow. Wow. Mm. yeah, so I, I became desperate to move, to have a change. You know, they say anything constant is change. So I, I was a kind of, oh no, I need to break through, I need to, I need to move, I need to explore. Okay. So I now applied for a voluntary redundancy because they were already okay. on the point of redundancy. Okay. So when that was granted, it's now started, it became a struggle now, but of course with an additional request. Okay, I know your last date should be on the night. Okay, but please, could you be patient to wait? Let's uh, get someone, you know, that you could hand over to. And I said, why not? I mean, I'm not living on a sad note, only that I felt, okay, I've, uh, I've explored enough here. I, I needed a boost. I have also some personal hiccups, you know, about myself. So I needed to, you know, move. That no problem. I'm going to wait, you know. So at the end, between the ninth that I was supposed to stop, I ended up staying till on the 26th, which became my last date of work. So okay. I know I'm a very diligent person. I know I'm okay. quite analytical. I know I'm I'm a good. In fact, I I am I have leadership skills. You know, I, okay. I I'm someone they could call upon from any department to come and rescue. So I'm okay. all 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 kind of all out kind of person. You know that okay. could be looked upon. So if I happen to be an employer, yes, absolutely yes, I will hire okay. myself over and over again. Wow, I, I, I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. I love your, your argument. And one thing I love about your argument is that you didn't use sentiment. You, you stated yeah. the facts. And these facts, yeah. we, are, we are credible enough to convince any employ, employer that uh, this person has the required experience, the skill and competence to add value. Now, I ask that question because uh, and this question is not just only for job seekers, but even for those people who are already working. Because at times, uh, 
I, I need a promotion. I need a better job. I need a better pay. Why should anybody hire you? Why should anybody give you promotion? If you can't clearly state that with credible facts, that you are going to struggle. You are going to struggle. So I, I, I need you guys to be able to see and just as Sarah has been able to clearly identify the value that she brings into an organization. If you can't clearly articulate those values, in fact, you are going to struggle in interview. You are going to struggle with your CV. You are going to struggle getting a job because the, the, the mental posture is, I need a job so that I can survive. And nobody hires you for just so that they can pay you salary and take care of your family or whatever. People hire you for value, for value. Now, I, 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 let me speak from experience. There was one time I was out of job and I was looking for job. What did I do? I sat down and did a SWOT analysis of myself. I put down what are my strengths? What are my weakness? What are the opportunities and traits? What competencies do I have that would be of value to any company? I took time to write this thing down. And because I wrote this thing down, you know that that exercise in itself helped to build the confidence that I needed for my interviews. Because it is amazing that a lot of people do not know so much about themselves. So for example, one of the questions that keep on occurring in the interview process is tell me about yourself. I mean, you have lived, <laughs> nobody has lived longer with you than you yourself. So it is expected that you should be able to sell yourself at any time because you know yourself. But the unfortunate thing is that people don't take time to self-reflect. And so that question itself can break or is, it, it can mar you or can be a, 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 an advantage for you because those are the questions that usually start the conversation. And guess what? Interviewers are biased. Everybody comes with his bias. So the way you start your interview could introduce some form of bias. And if you don't address this thing, it's going to be a problem. So, and how do you address this issue? By knowing your value. Yes, you don't have a job. You may be broke. You know, you may not have anything. But if you don't identify your value as a person, the value that you add, you are going to struggle to get a job. This is very, very important. And it, it has some psychological implications too, because it makes you know that, yes, I may not have a job, I may be broke, but I have something in me that could be of a value to anybody. And just in case you are not sure of the value that you have, then the route you should be taking is to spend time to develop those values through internship through volunteer, through working for free. I, I, I know the, the, the natural impulse is that work for free care. I'm looking for money, I'm looking for work. But look, you are going to keep on looking for job for a long time if you, you, you jump the process of developing that, that uh, skill or competence needed by job seekers. Well, come to think about it, if you are a business person, who would you hire? Are you going to hire somebody who, ah, uh, this person is a graduate, let me just help the person. Or are you going to hire somebody that will add value to your organization? And for some people who, if you are just graduating, for example, for God's sake, I'm expecting that even while in school, there are a lot of things that you should have done that shows that you are a value adding person. When you are your NYC, if you slept through your NYC and coasted along through your NYC, it's quite unfortunate because you should be able to demonstrate that I'm always adding value wherever I am. It doesn't matter. We are as a teacher, as even in church, in mosque, I'm a kind of person that adds value. And I can show you my track record of where I have added value. And if you have not done that, this is a time to now pay the price by doing volunteering 
or internship. Just make up your mind that, you know what? I know the jobs are not coming. I don't have the experience. But I want to take this maybe three months, six months. Just give yourself time. I want to do volunteering. But you're not just doing volunteering for volunteering sake. Whatever volunteering or internship you are doing, you must ensure that you add value to an extent that when people see your what you have done in the space of three months, six months, say, wow, if this person can do such, add such level of value as a volunteer or intent, I mean, this person, if we give this person more uh, an opportunity, the person will be able to do, uh, do more. So you have no business looking for a job if you are not clear on the value that you are adding. You have no business asking for promotion if you are not clear the value that you are adding. So like the mistake a lot of people do is that they spend a lot of time looking for a job and not preparing for the job they are looking for. Why you are looking for a job? I didn't say you shouldn't look for a job, but why you are looking for that job? Always ask yourself, am I the right person for this job? If I have a company, would I hire myself, knowing what I know about myself? Would I be a, no sentiment attached? And you have to be very true to yourself. And always do this in writing. Have a journal and be very, very truthful to yourself. So that is one thing I would like to uh, uh, leave you with. Number two is, so what you are clear of the reason why they should hire you. you. I mean, you have to be, and you have to be clear with facts. Why should they hire me because I'm a graduate? Why should they hire me because I'm a first class? Come on, I'm not hiring a first class. I'm hiring somebody who can do the job. Why should you, I have spent four years, I have masters. Come on, masters does not get the job done. Even though it can be a requirement. It's to, masters, could, for some job, it could be the requirement. But the major thing they are looking for, every business has problems. And they are looking for people who can solve their problems. And the problem could be HRO, sales, admin, IT, marketing, and what have you. So the question is, what am I doing to be able to solve that problem? I think if you spend more of your time developing yourself and preparing yourself for your job, you are likely to get that job faster than you think. I don't know if this is helping somebody. Hello, can you, can you guys still hear me? Yes, can sir, you, I, can, I just, can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, so, so, so that's one. Then number two, you must, you must have a clear vision of the kind of job that you weren't. One of the huge mistakes I see people doing is I'm looking for just any job. And it, that is not a good strategy. Some people just assume that, oh, if I spread myself wide, I might be lucky. But you know, I, I, I've seen this over, over, and over again. I've done this myself I've, because I'm in, a, I'm in an industry where we help a lot of job seekers. That strategy doesn't work. Focus is very, very, very powerful. So you must identify an area where you really want to build your career path. And that area must be tied to what you are naturally wired for each and every one of us. Look, nobody was created here to, to just work and earn a living. Don't look at your job as a way of earning a living. Look at your job as an opportunity or a platform to express your true potential, to be of service to the world. And that could come out through HRO, IT, graphic designer, and what have you. So first and foremost, you have to be clearly focused on what you want to do. So there are things that you are naturally wired, things that you can do far better than any other person. Identify those things that you are passionate about, things that you are interested in, things that you can do easy, sharply. Some people can bake. Some people love children. They can work with children easily. Some people can, you know, talk to strangers and can convince them of anything. Some people have the capacity to teach easily. They can transfer knowledge. Identify your area of gifting. Identify the area that you know you can do well. 
and have a career path and have a vision. Because here, here's one thing about focus, and I've tried this and it has worked tremendously. When you are focused on a thing, the universe will cooperate and pull circumstances and people to help you. The brain is a goal machine. If, you, if your, your brain is clear, if you are clear on the goal that you want to achieve, subconsciously, your mind will begin to pull information, circumstances, draw your attention to the things related to that goal, that single goal that you have set for yourself. I remember one time, I think it was about 10 years ago, I wanted to purchase a car. So I got interested in uh, uh, buying Honda. All of a sudden, I started seeing Honda everywhere. It was as if it was only Honda that existed in the planet. Why was that? Why did that happen? I started seeing opportunities to get, you know, for purchase of Honda and all that. Can somebody tell me, can somebody describe why, why, why is that happening? I want somebody, let's make this interactive. What, what is your guess? How can you explain this concept? And all of a sudden, I'm beginning to notice more Honda, more than any other cars. Can somebody talk to us about this? Hi, good happening? afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, um, basically what's happening to you is, um, you know what they say, when you set your mind on something, um, you begin to attract those kind, those um, kind of stalls and, you know, to yourself. So because you set your mind on wonder, just like you said, it has been registered in your subconscious. So even when you're sleeping, everything that revolves around you is a Honda car. So even if you're seeing, seeing a vendor, you know, it wants to appear to you. It's going to appear like a Honda because in your subconscious, a Honda has been registered. So the entire universe is all working for you to get a Honda car because that's what your heart is fixed on at the moment. So that's why that's right. everywhere you went to, you kept seeing a Honda car car a honda car a honda car because nothing else is registered in your subconscious than a honda car that's beautiful so that's it awesome 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 so so that's what actually actually happened I, I, and i actually got 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 the car and uh, I, I own the the honda car that, that was about 10 years ago so th this concept of focus is extremely powerful in fact, it's a body of research. And even across religion, both Christian, Muslim, even in the secular world, knows the importance of being focused. So before you even search for a job, ask yourself, what do I really want? Once you are clear about what you want, forget irrespective of what is happening, the coronavirus, uh, the economy, it doesn't, don't, don't let that to perturb you. Just be clear, what do you want? Don't focus on what you don't want. Focus on what you actually want. Then write it down. If possible, paste it somewhere so that you can constantly remind yourself and put it into that subconscious. Because what you are doing is to train your mind to be able to attract opportunities in line with your vision. This is very, very important. Now, vision is not enough. And this is where people miss it. You know, people, I'm sure some of you have listened to this, uh, uh, watch this film called The Secret. Uh, you just think anything and it comes to pass. Now, the missing link that people forget is that you, you, your vision, that thing that you're focusing on, is supposed to spur you to take a corresponding action. So for example, so let me let me be specific. If it's HRO, you have discovered that you are a HRO person. You work so easily with people. You know how to get things done through people. You know how to organize people, which is what HRO is all about. If you know that is who you are, and you want to be an authority in HRO, you put that vision on the board that I want. Maybe in five years time, 10 years time, I want to be one of the top authority 
as a HR professional, helping to solve people problem in Nigeria or in Africa, you can put it there. What that does for you is to begin to bring ideas, suggestions, or actions that you need to take in line with that vision. So that vision is not enough. There must be a corresponding action. And that takes me to habits. As HRO experts, so you have seen yourself as HRO experts. In fact, this is what I recommend. Don't see yourself as somebody who will become that HR. See yourself as somebody who has already become and act as if you are already that person. So the question is, how do HRO thought leaders behave? What do they read to? Which kind of friends do they have? What do they invest in? So you begin to develop the habits that is incongruent with your vision. So if you are pushing something and your habit is not aligned with that vision, you will keep on chasing forever. So you must ask yourself, is my vision or what I'm chasing, do I have the habit to put it? Meaning that where I'm spending my money, where I'm spending my time, where I'm spending my effort and energy, does it revolve around the vision that I have in terms of career path? If this is not aligned, it's going to be a problem. So having vision is not enough. You must have the habit to be able to support that. You notice that every person that is great or have been successful in any area, there's a particular habit that sustained that level of success. There's a particular habit that have sustained that level of success. So you must cultivate that habit. And thirdly, you must have what you call positive affirmations. We, we post out a, by the way, we post out a survey and some of you filled it. And we, uh, one of the questions we asked, why, why, what is the reason why you haven't gotten a job? And some people will say, uh, it's Nigeria, coronavirus, a lot of people have lost their job. Uh, this answers this thing has brought a lot of, you know, there's no job out there. What do you want to see? You always find what you want to see. If you want to see, the loss of job, if you want to see poverty, if you want to see unemployment, you will always find it. Just like, like I told you, when I was looking for a Honda, I, I saw Honda every year. That does not mean that other cars didn't exist. Even in this pandemic, people are getting jobs. And I'm talking of people who, I'm not, not just people who have a lot of experiences. I'm talking of entry level jobs. Just recently, my cousin who is staying with me, who just came to stay with me in Lagos, uh, you know, she, she has not gone for NYC. In fact, she's waiting for her NYC. She just got a job with one of the top companies in Nigeria that have a lot of branches across Nigeria. She doesn't, she has not even gone for NYC. So the excuse that you are making uh, is because I don't have experience. It doesn't even cut it. So you must have what you call positive affirmation. And those positive affirmations can come in, I am smart, I'm intelligent. I, you know, you, you write what you want. At first, when you are doing it, you will look stupid. Trust me, because when you look at your evidence and circumstances, it looks as if you are deceiving yourself. But once you say that enough, you will say it enough that your subconscious will not be able to differentiate between what is real and what is not real. And you say it enough to even make it happen, to make it happen. And finally, is what we call have a plan. How many of you have a written plan of how you intend to get a job? A written plan of how you intend to get a job. What you need to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. Let, let me see that in the comment. How many of you just say, if you don't have a plan, say, no, I don't have. If I have a plan, yes, I do. Let's see that in the comment. Let's do that so that I can round up and take questions. How many of you have a plan? A clear plan of how to land your job? 
Just a simple plan. I have. A well thought out plan. Yes, I have. Yes, you do. Beautiful, beautiful. Any other person? Okay, so let, 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 let me say this. One of the reasons, especially in this part of the world, why we don't do well in so many things is that we, we leave things in our mind. We don't, we don't, and this is not just about the job seeking, it's an attitude. It is very important that you live a life that is, is centered on planning, irrespective. So if you're looking for a job, you should have a plan. If you, are in, if you are working, you should have a plan on a weekly, a monthly basis. Well, I, I ask my, any member of my team, before we start a week, we have a plan of what we do on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. In fact, we have a goal for a month. We have a plan for an entire year because it helps you to coordinate your activities and makes you to be more effective rather than just you know, shooting around. In fact, research has shown that those people who have a plan have a high probability of success than those who don't have a plan at all. So it is critical that you start with a simple plan. As time goes on, your plan could be more sophisticated, but have a simple plan of what you will do daily, weekly, or monthly. Set goals for yourself. I was shocked when I was uh, looking at our survey that we sent to most of you. Uh, we asked uh, uh, how many job applications have you done in the last two months? And some were saying between one to five. I mean, if you're a job seeker, I, I, I expect that even in a week, you should be doing nothing less than 30 to 40 applications. Because this is your main work. Looking for work is work on its own. This is your main, main work. So you need to put the work into looking for work. You need to, you, you need to put that effort beyond just the normal. And you agree with me that the competition is quite high, high there. So you, you need to put in your A game. And the good thing is that once you put in the work, in getting a job, that work ethics will go with you when you eventually get the job. So it's even developing your work ethics, which is very critical in a, a being productive uh, at, your, at your work. So I've spoken about the power of vision, the habits that must support that vision of that career path that you're choosing, positive affirmation, having a plan, uh, I, and I would like to add this, please remove every self-limiting beliefs. Oh, it's because I'm old. Oh, it's because I'm too qualified. Oh, it's because I have a taught class. Oh, it's because I don't have experience. Now, you will notice that every excuse you make, there's somebody who has that similar experience, but yet have succeeded in spite of those experiences. If you are talking about somebody who has no experience, I just told you that my cousin, who is even waiting for NYIC, just got a job. If you are talking for people who are overqualified, I know a lot of people who are overqualified, but got a job. If you are talking, I have a third class, come on. There are a lot of people who have third class. I know of somebody who, they took him, they didn't want to ask for CV because he was good at what he does, that, he has spent over two weeks into his job. Then the HR just remembered, ah, I didn't even collect your CV because it was just too good. You know, when people start asking for CV certification, it's because they are not really sure of what you can deliver yet. But there's a level of the quality of work that you have done that will make people to even bypass some certain criteria that they have set, uh, set for you. So, this is very, very important. So have a plan. Sit down and write your self-limiting beliefs. What are those self-limiting beliefs? Oh, I don't have connection. Oh, I don't do this. I don't do this. Question your self-limiting beliefs. Question it. So if you don't have connection, build one. Build one. We have LinkedIn for, for, for Coin Out Loud. 
It has never been easier to build connection with HR and CEOs like, like now. In those days, it's almost impossible to build that relationship. But now, to have access to HRO and CEOs just by understanding LinkedIn and connecting with them. You can connect with almost anybody in the planet if you know how, 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 to, how to do that. So I, I would like to end here. Remember, let, let me end here by saying, please, while you are looking for a job, you must prepare for your opportunity because they say luck is when opportunity meets with preparation. Prepare as if you have already had that job. And I, I, I must tell you, this, this is hard for so many people because people are waiting to have a job before they prepare, before they develop those skills to do that job. But what I'm saying is that if you have gotten the first level right, having a vision, having a habit, you must prepare as if, so if you, have, if you want HRO job, be preparing as if you are already in the HRO. Do you have HRO friends? Do you have HRO materials? Have you attended their conferences? You are already, do you, are you, do you belong to the group? So you saturate yourself, you immerse yourself into that world. You start taking small, small projects on HRO and all that. It's a matter of time. It takes a lot of work, but I guarantee you, if you do this judiciously, just put up your mind. If you do this consistently, you are likely to get a job faster than the rest of people who just are waiting for luck. Nobody's helping me and things like this. I hope this, this helps. So please, if you have any comments or question, this would be the good time to 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 speak uh, as we as we round up. So okay, you you can speak up or write on the chat session. So while I'm reading some of the chat session, uh, I'm waiting for you to to speak. If you have any questions or comment, something that has worked for you, you know or whatever question you want to ask, please feel, feel free to do that. Okay, somebody said, uh, we will get, will we get the replay recording of this session? Oh, oh, oh definitely you will, you will, you will get it. I once had a plan of, I once had a plan of having a plan, but haven't put through with it. You haven't put through it, you see, you see, it, 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 so you, you really need to have a lot of discipline to be able to, uh, the question why, if something is so important to you, you will do it. If something is so important to you, if, if you ask yourself, what is the cost of not having a plan? What is the cost of not having a plan? And, and think about it. They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You have lived your life without a plan. Why don't you try a life that has a plan and see the difference so that you can compare for yourself what that difference is? So if getting a job or, in, in fact, I, I don't like talking about getting a job. It looks as if just getting a job, surviving, and all that. Come on, you are you are you are not here to survive. You are not here to just get a job. I, I want us to change that paradigm. You are not here to just get a job. You are here to fulfill purpose. Now, a job could be a platform that you use to express that purpose. If you shift your your, your paradigm. So looking at this job thing in that way, you, 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 I think you approach it more differently. You approach it more differently. So don't approach your job like somebody who is trying to survive, wants to make, make money. I mean, if you're trying to survive, then life is not worth living. If that is all life is all about, there, could, there should be more to life than just getting a job uh, and all that. So it's very important that we, uh, uh, have the right uh, paradigm. Okay. 
any question? Question, comment? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, for example, assuming someone is uh, an administrative person, like administration, and uh, you want to go into HR, of course, we know that um, you need to enroll in some HR programs and all that. But minus uh, the yeah. HR programs, every other thing that is required for that HR um, roles, okay. you have it like um, organizational uh, qualities, um, like um, you're good with analytics, you're good with, uh, okay. you know, yeah, of course. And, uh, but you're not an HR person. How okay. will you, yes, how, how, can, what can you do? Because I've seen some roles, you know, in fact, even in our world this time, you you could be a statistics person, but you find yourself doing something else. And you're also good in it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So how can you marry, how would you be able to go around it? Because uh, I've seen a situation where an engineer, you know, becomes a, <laughs> becomes a, uh, which other administration uh, um, field would I call now? Maybe, okay, an admin manager, for example. Okay. You, you understand, yes. So um, minus the fact that, yes, you, you need to go in for HR certifications and all that. Could there be a possibility you write starting that job and then walk through the certification stages? Is it possible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so I, I, I like to, so there's a normal way, there's a template that everybody follows, which is for you to really, really do well in, in, in HR. Certification is very, very important. Hmm? However, there are some people who have broken these rules, by the way. But let's talk about the normal way that people actually uh, become HRO expert or professional at the top level. So one of the way I always encourage people is, first and foremost, when you, when, you, when you have a job, which may not be HRO related, or, or which it can be from customer service, it can be admin, which are also related. Once you get into that organization, every organization is likely to have a HRO function. And even though they don't have a HRO function, they will have a, a, a jobs that are HRO related. So if you're in a, an organization, if you enter an organization as an admin or a customer service, and you have a HRO department, you can volunteer within that organization that if you want to, if you know that HRO is your thing, you can begin to work, have this conversation with your HRO department and volunteer yourself to, be, to, to do projects when the department has, I, I mean, HRO has a lot of uh, projects that they work on year in, year out, every month. They have a lot of projects. So volunteer, like where, where I work currently, I do a lot of things that are not even directly related to what I do. I volunteer myself within my organization. In fact, there's a project I'm working on now that's related to IT. Yet I'm not in IT department, but I'm working with the head of IT to develop a blueprint of something that we need to do. So while you may not, so some people will say, ah, it won't take me, I'm, I'm, I've not had certification, it's, it's, it's difficult. Look for other, 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 other uh, functions that recruit easily without too much of a certification, which is admin, customer service, those roles that are also people related kind of role. And when you are ready, when you're fit, when you have put a fit into that organization, 
you cannot gradually begin to, to, to work on that project. That's one. Two, have a mentor. Have a mentor, a HRO uh, a mentor, somebody that, who is already up there, you know, somebody that you can uh, uh, talk to about things related to HRO. So put yourself in HRO circles, build connection and network among HRO professionals and begin to have, so study ahead, read, you know, know about this HRO thing. So that when you are discussing with them and they say, ah, man, this guy, you, you, you are not certified yet, but the kind of things you are saying, you kind of understand these things. I mean, you know them and all that. And they begin to pick interest in you. And some of them could give you a chance. So you, through that connection and network, you can quickly leapfrog or just cut short that uh, a process of trying to get a HRO HR job and, and things like that. I, I, I don't know if that helps. Hello, is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 very sure. Yeah, so, yeah. so that, that's- Thank you. Yeah, so those Thank are you, some sir. of the things yeah, uh, you, you, you can do. Yeah, and, and secondly, okay. I, I want to challenge you. You see, don't, don't just okay. think of HRO like that. Always ask yourself, as an, what problem do I really want to solve? I, I, I always ask myself, okay. whether it's HRO or IT, what problem do I really want to solve for organization? What do I see organizations yeah. struggle with consistently that I would like to solve? Okay. What is it? So for example, okay. let, let me give you a very practical thing. When I was working, I didn't start in things related to training, but I noticed that a lot of organizations we send people for training, and when they come back, nothing is being done about it. So they spend a lot of money on training, and they don't see the practical result. I mean, training is a means to an end. It's supposed to improve performance on the job. Mm -hmm. That is what training is all about. It's not just an event that you go to go and have lunch and what have you, and nothing happened. So I felt so bad that no, there could be a way to ensure that training actually translates to performance. And I began to study in that area and develop tools and all that in such a way that I can now recommend for organization, do you know what? I can help you track your return on investment in every training that you do, such that every training that you have for your staff you can see the business results. And guess what? CEOs are interested in business results. They are not interested in plenty of grammar. Can this affect the bottom line and all that? So I'm not talking like the normal LD, you get certification and all that. No, no, no. Certification is just a need. What problem do I want to solve for organization? I think it's this kind of thinking that we need to have rather than just, oh, certification, I want to do HRO professional. Uh, 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 and things, things like that. I know of somebody who was so good helping organization to solve people problem that CIPM gave him certification without him doing the course because he was too good. Just imagine that he has all those certification and he didn't do any training at all because they saw the value he was bringing to us and I said, man, this guy, even the people that have certificates do not are not doing what this guy is doing. Those are the kind of stories I, I, I like to I like to hear. Rather than uh, certificate, I mean certificate is, is is good to have it, but I think we should think more than just having a certificate. Okay, anybody? Okay, so let, let, let's round it up here. So let me read the last one so that we can round up here. And I think uh, we have spent so much time. I don't want to spend too much of it. I say most recruiters don't give feedback and it make it a little difficult to look for where to improve. How can we assess ourselves after application or interview with no honest feedback to help know our fault, weakness, and where to Im improve? So I'll give you two 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 things that you can do to solve the problem can you guys hear me I, I just want to be sure that you guys can hear me i want to give you two practical things that you can do to solve this problem 
Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so if you go for an interview and you didn't get feedback, because feedback helps us to improve so that next time we can do better. Now you can do two things. This is what I do. If I have an interview with a company, an organization, one of the things, the first thing I do is to go to LinkedIn and connect with them. If I cannot connect with them directly, I connect with people who are working in that company. That's the first thing I do. I build that relationship even before I go for my interview. Because it gives me an edge over every other interviewer. In fact, I will even start asking the person about, so when I'm doing my research about the company, I can get inside, I can even get an idea of salary, for example, maybe not the HRO, but even maybe some of the staff who are working there. So I have information that may not be on the internet or on their website and all that. So once you have built that connection, even before your interview, after the interview, once you don't get feedback, you go back to your LinkedIn. You talk to the HR. If the HR is not answering you, you talk to other people because every company, you know, you can see LinkedIn is so beautiful. You see almost everybody who have a LinkedIn account working in that organization. So even though you don't have direct contact with the HR, if, if let's assume the HR did not uh, accept your connection, the chances that others will accept your connect connection is high, especially if you do it right. We have a course on how to, how to do that on LinkedIn. Uh, time will not allow us to, to do that now. But if you're able to build that connection, you can get your feedback there. That's one. Number two, one of the things that you can do immediately, number two, is to look for a trusted person, maybe an experienced person or HRO person. And just, merely you finish your interview, you, you, you just tell them about your, how the interview went. Oh, this is the question they asked me. This is how I responded. So the person can say, oh, you shouldn't have responded like that. Ah, you should have done this better. Oh, so immediately you finish the interview, maybe immediately within 24 hours, you talk to a senior person, a professional, somebody who understands recruitment and just tell them what transpired. And they could also give you feedback of what you should have done better. So those are the two hacks that you can do if you are not getting the normal feedback from a, from a recruiter or whoever recruited you. Uh, is, that, is that clear enough? I hope you have been able to answer that question. So in the absence of any other question, I would like to round up like this. So we have what will... Uh, Looking at the survey, I noticed that a lot of people are struggling with, still struggling with the fundamental CV writing, uh, overlay, having a job plan and things like uh -huh. that. And so uh, we have a lot of training to deal with these specific areas, maybe CV, cover letter, LinkedIn and all that. But if you cannot wait for such training, because we are, we are rounding up the year, we have what we call the KEC employability uh, 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 pack. If you cannot wait for that training and if you know that you are struggling to figure out, figure out this yourself, just give me a minute. And uh, can, can, can you see my slide? Can you see that? I have an inter I have an interview. I have a question. I have a visual interview to attend I'm on the 14th of this month. I want to know the difference. Can you see my screen? We have Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, I see your screen. Okay. Okay, so we have what we call the KC Employability Starter Pack for those who are struggling with this CV. And we, have, we know that the services of CV out there are quite expensive. I've seen even uh, 15, 20,000 for revamping a, a, a CV. It, it takes a lot of work to, 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 to 
put together a very, very good CV, especially CV that is filled with keywords because your CV usually goes through what we call application tracking system. So if you can't wait for our courses, some of our courses that we have, and you say, no, 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 I, I, I can't wait for that. I need it now, now. You can kindly indicate interest by uh, maybe sign up for our basic standard or premium. Now, the, the basic is just helping you to revamp your, your, your CV and making sure that it is tailored to what actually you want to uh, apply for. So uh, some of our experts are, uh, are going to work with you to ensure that you not just only develop a good CV, but you understand that CV. Some people just have CV made for them and they can't defend it. No, you should be able to defend your CV. You should be able to defend your CV. So it's beyond just revamping your CV. It's the ability to defend your CV. And uh, so that's 2000. Then the standard is, the standard package is CV revamping, cover letter, and LinkedIn revamping. Some people just send their CV like that without a cover letter. That's a, that's a big error. And uh, so if you need somebody to work with you to put together a corresponding cover letter, which will make somebody to look at your CV because your cover letter is like a pitch, which is different from CV writing. Uh, it's very important. And uh, we also have LinkedIn revamping. I, can, I can't overemphasize the importance of a, a LinkedIn. Very, very important. Uh, very, very important. If you do your LinkedIn very well, in, in some cases, you will get HR people looking for you rather than you looking, looking for them with a proper uh, LinkedIn uh, revamping. And this costs uh, uh, 3,000. And uh, the premium version is CV, Coplita, LinkedIn revamping, a job hunting plan. So if you don't have it, so we are giving you a job hunting plan, a template that helps you to be able to plan how to get that job. So you have both monthly, uh, weekly, uh, monthly, a detailed plan where you can always you know, help like a blueprint. We also have what's called a self-assessment template. This self-assessment template is the core of everything you do. I, I told you that if you don't, if you don't, there are a lot of people, us who don't know so much about ourselves because we don't sit down to really evaluate ourselves. So this self-assessment template will help you to know yourself in such a way that you can be able to defend even this CV, the cover letter and the LinkedIn. Through this self-assessment, you automatically be able to even write your CV yourself, your cover letter and your LinkedIn because everything that you will need is in this self-assessment every single content or material that you need. So it's a foundation for CV writing. It's even a foundation for your elevator pitch. Tell me about yourself. Everything is tied to this self-assessment template. And finally, we have what to call the personal profile banner. The personal profile banner is just like a banner. I, I wish I have it here. Uh, God's gift, if you have it there, maybe you can display it. But the personal banner is just a very beautiful banner summarizing about what your skills, your competence, what you can showcase in your LinkedIn or your social media platform that just sells you. And everything is for 5,000. So this employability startup pack, we are giving it for the first 10 people. Because normally the, the premium version that is for 5,000 is normally for the, the value of the price for the premium is 40,000, ideally. But because this, this, this takes a lot of time to put together. I mean, if you can do this yourself, fine. But if you need somebody to really help you, it takes a lot of time. It's crazy to sit down and customize CV, cover letter, LinkedIn, personal profile, and all that. It, it, it's a lot of work, a lot of work. So we are just asking to, if it's something you can afford, then fine. If you want to wait for some of our trainings on this topic, then that, that, that's okay. But we are just training out this opportunity for the first 10 people. And if you're interested, this is the link. Just click on this link and uh, indicate your interests and uh, we'll always get back to you. So 
I think that's all. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate your, your, your time and for being here today. Any comment or question as we close? The last comment. Okay, so this is what I call the personal banner. So this is this one will be designed for you and you can showcase this on your LinkedIn. You can showcase this on your LinkedIn uh, and all your social media. This part of the premium pack, aside from the CV writing uh, and what have you. Okay, any comments? Comment, questions? So thank you very, very much for your time. Please, if you have any questions or any concern whatsoever, we are, will be very glad to help you in your career needs. Please, uh, let's have your feedback. The feedback is uh, the feedback is on the comment section. Please, let's have your feedback. And if there's anything you're struggling at all in terms of, of career, please let us know, and we'll be glad to give you the needed support that we can. That is the reason why we are here. Thank you so much. Uh, this recording will be available and we will uh, send them to you. So what you will do is, what, once you feel the feedback, it will tell us that you attended this event. Once you can feel the feedback, it will, so we'll send the recording to all those that have attended uh, this event through the feedback, because that's the only way we can know if you attended this, this uh, event. Uh, thank you very, very much. Well, also, you can also, you can also follow us on our social media page uh, at um, Knowledge Exchange Center. Come in, let me send the link here so you can just have access to it. So for Instagram, you can follow us at KC underscore Nigeria. For Twitter, at KC uh, Nigeria. On Facebook, uh, at case you just go to the comment section you're going to see um, the handles for our social media page so follow us to get uh, more information about uh, our trainings and um, everything we do at, at KEC thank you so much everyone for um, for being here today thank you and also the starter pack link is on the uh, comment section you can also copy or click on it to to fill in your interest Thank you so much. So that, that will be all. Um, so you, you, can, you, you can also, if you're not in the Telegram already, you can just drop a question in, the tele, in our Telegram uh, 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 session. So you can put the Telegram and we can continue the conversation there. And uh, uh, so you just connect to our Telegram and we'll talk there. If you need any help whatsoever in, in Related to your career or whatever is the challenge related to career, please let us know. We'll be glad to help. Thank you so much for for your time. We quite appreciate this, and we hope that this was quite a uh, helpful to all of you. Do have a wonderful day and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. I will wish you all the best in your career journey. Thank you so much. <laughs>